Alright guys, how's it going? After my RX500 series review, I got a lot of comments and questions asking what the overlay was during the part of the video where I showed Radeon Chill and all the underclocking, undervolting stuff. So I just thought, let's do a tutorial, setting all this up and showing exactly what it all does. It's actually two programs and in actual fact, there is a better program than what I have been using. But let's just start from the start and what I used in the RX500 review, which was of course MSI Afterburner, which is used as an overclocking tool and also RevaTuner statistics server. RevaTuner stats, which displays hardware information on the screen. So let's just start by downloading both of those programs. Now you can get Afterburner direct from msi.com. You can even get a tutorial on it, but for now we're going to click on downloads. So now we've got Afterburner on the left, you've also got a program called MSI Combustor. Combustor's pretty good for testing out your overclocks and your undervolts, but I normally just use one or two different games for that. For now though, we're going to download Afterburner. Right, now that Afterburner's done, it wants you to install RevaTuner. Right, so here we've got MSI Afterburner up and running, and this is the default skin. However, the first thing I like to do is change it to something a little bit less messy which means clicking on this cogwheel icon here, settings, and you've got these forward and backward arrows here. If you just scroll along to user interface, the very last tab, and I prefer to choose the default skin, the big edition. Click on OK. And now we've got something that is much cleaner and much easier to use. Now, like I said, Afterburner is well known as an overclocking tool. Nowadays, I would prefer to use Wattman on my AMD graphics cards, but when using the Nvidia graphics cards, I would still use Afterburner or something else like EVGA Precision X. And it is a very good tool for this. We'll just do a quick overview here because I am using the GTX 1070 for a reason which will soon become obvious. But all of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. You've got a core voltage here, but it doesn't let you change it because changing voltages on a GPU is one of the easiest ways to kill your graphics card. It's very easily fixed though. You simply go into settings and on the very first tab, you've got unlock voltage control. Simply click on that, click on OK. It will need to restart though. Now that it's restarted, you can change the voltage all the way up to plus 100. You're probably gonna be all right. Just, you know, be careful with it. Now you've also got the power limit, a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 126. What this simply means is you can tell your graphics card to use up to 26% more power in order to maintain its core clock speed. You saw it in my RX500 series video where the graphics card would not maintain its 1393 MHz top boost speed. The easiest fix for that is to simply increase your power limit. That does of course increase the amount of power that your graphics card can use. Just make sure that your power supply is also up to that task. We're going to leave this at 100% right now. Again, you've got your core clock in megahertz. Whatever you do, don't make it plus 1000. You can also enter the values in here directly rather than using the slider. We'll leave it at plus zero for now and also your memory clocks. Now the fan speed is pretty interesting and this is one of Afterburner's best features. If you click on settings again and click on the fan tab and now we have a checkbox to enable the user defined software automatic fan control. So if we click on that, before I continue, I'm gonna get rid of these annoying tool taps. It doesn't really matter where you go on the screen the tooltips seem to follow you. So the very last tab again, user interface, and you want to uncheck this, show user interface tooltips. Click on OK. Right, so settings back into fan again, and now the tooltips are gone. Being able to set your fan curves is one of Afterburner's best abilities. And this is something that I have always used Afterburner for. I'm not gonna go over this here. You can take a look at it if you want. What we are interested in is the monitoring tab. And here we have a list of stuff that can be monitored. Now all of these graphs can be checked or unchecked. And if they're checked, then they will show up in the hardware monitor here at the side. You can see power here and power, GPU temperature, GPU temperature. It really is that simple. So if I uncheck power, click on OK, the power graph has now been removed. Power was of course one of the most important ones we wanted to see though. So let's keep that one on. But it's all well and good having this here. What we really want is have it on screen while we're playing the game. In the overlay, like what I showed while playing Warcraft in my RX580 review video. This is really simple. When you've got your graph highlighted, you simply check this box, show an on-screen display. And it shows up here in the properties. Now we probably also want to know the GPU temperature. So once again, on-screen display. The GPU usage is very interesting as well, because that lets us know if the GPU is tapped out or if maybe the CPU is holding it back. So let's click on that. And of course, we're always going to be interested in the frame rate. So let's take that one as well. And it's not just graphics cards. You can, of course, also look at your CPU usage. 
and stuff like your RAM and page file. Now the last thing you want to do is click on the on-screen display tab and you want to give it a toggle hotkey. I normally go with Alt and O. O for on-screen display. Right, and that's us pretty much done with the on-screen display. There is one other thing about Afterburner that is really nice and that is it has a very, very nice screen capture ability. A lot of the screen capture stuff seems a bit random to me. Afterburner is very, very good. I'm also going to set a hotkey for this. Alt and insert. Select which type of screenshot you want and also browse to where you want the screenshot to go. I always just stick it onto my desktop and click on OK. So now all we have to do is load up a game. But before we do that, RevaTuner just decided that it's got a new version for download. So let's go and download that right now. now you can grab it over at Guru3D. It looks like a new version with a new skin. So here we go, down at the very bottom, version 7.0 beta. Let's just download this one. Now before you install it, you're going to want to switch down Afterburner. So it looks like we're going to have to reboot before we continue. Right, so we're back after a reboot and I had forgot that I wanted MSI Afterburner to start automatically. So it hasn't done that. So let's just fix that up right now. And again, all we have to do is go into settings, start with Windows and I generally start it minimized. I guess we also want to unlock the voltage monitoring here as well now because I was doing that in my RX580 review video. So let's do that now. Click on OK. Every time you unlock the voltage stuff, you do need to restart Afterburner. Right, so into settings, we want to click on monitoring tab again. And right at the very bottom now, we can see the GPU voltage. Show on the on-screen display, click on OK. So we've got a bunch of stuff now that should show up on the on-screen display. So let's start up Rise of the Tomb Raider and have a look. Right, so even on the title screen, we can see up the top left, all the stats we wanted to see through Afterburner. But maybe not quite what we were expecting. This first number, power? is in percentage, but what we really wanted to see was how many watts. I mean, what is 67%? I'm not entirely sure. This GTX 1070 I have is the MSI Gaming X, which comes with an 8 pin and a 6 pin, which means it's a 300 watt capable card. And the boost clock is almost two gigahertz by default, which reminds me, I should have had the core clock on screen. Let's actually just go and do that now then. So I'm gonna alt tab out of Tomb Raider. We've got Afterburner again, settings, monitoring, and here we go, core clock. Show on on-screen display, click on OK. Now, if we go back into Tomb Raider, we can now see that the core clock is showing at two gigahertz, and that's how simple that is. Again though, this power percentage is really not what I wanted, and it seems that quite a few of you were having this same issue. I couldn't quite understand what was going on here because the very same power option using the AMD graphics cards shows up as watts which is much more interesting and a lot of you were wondering how to get the watts number to show. I don't know if this is an Nvidia card issue or if it's just the Polaris class of graphics cards which shows the wattage totals while using Afterburner. Before we fix that, let's take a quick look at Riva Tuner though so we can see how to change the font and all that kind of stuff. Now we can see the Afterburner icon down here in the toolbar and when it loads, it also loads up Riva Tuner, the little monitor icon with the 60 on it. Now clicking on that brings up the Riva Tuner statistics server. It looks a little bit complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. At the top, you can start with Windows and this allows Riva Tuner to start without MSI Afterburner having to be loaded as well. Now you also have this show on on-screen display button, which is just a global switch for turning the on-screen display on or off. Interestingly enough, it is exactly the same as pressing Alt and O, or whatever hotkey combination you choose to show the on-screen display. As we can see here, Alt and O, switches it off and Alt and O, switches it back on. This is of course the exact same as using it in game. Alt and O, switches the on-screen display off and Alt and O, switches it back on. Now you have this global properties profile which is basically everything and everything we see here on the right hand side comes under this global profile. You can however set up a profile for each individual game or application. Riva Tuner actually has a bunch of pre-created profiles, you just can't see them here in this version. However, if you go into setup down here and uncheck this box hide pre-created profiles, click on OK and you can see all the profiles for each game and each application. So why would you need an application or gaming profile? Well, the reason is Riva Tuner hooks into absolutely everything that it thinks it can hook into. And the on-screen display will display in anything that doesn't have a profile and doesn't have an application detection level set to none. 
So let me just show you that using my OBS recording software. You can see here that it's absolutely fine. There's nothing on the screen here. If I go to my OBS studio icon, right click it, then click on properties. We can see the program's location and at the end we can see the file name of obs64.exe. Now back in Revituner, if we search through this list now to find obs64.exe, there we are. And we can see that the application detection level has indeed been set to none. But if I stick this up to say hi, now every time you do this, you do need to restart Revituner. And there you can see when Revituner started back up, the on-screen display hooked into OBS. That's not really what anybody would want. Now, of course, Alt and O switches it off. But you can sort of imagine if you had quite a lot of stuff on screen and, well, it can get pretty messy. The best thing to do is just set up a profile for those programs that you're using a lot, like for me, OBS, and set the application detection level back to none. Again, if I shut down Reva Tuner, it will restart itself automatically because Afterburner's running. And now OBS is absolutely fine. So that's what this application profiles is all about. Those are unwanted ones. Sometimes though, you want to see it in a game and it doesn't show. This is what this detection level is all about. If you're kind of struggling to get a game to show on low detection level, then try medium or high instead. There's other stuff as well, for example, stealth mode. Some games have got anti-cheat systems and Reva Tuner can make those games believe that you're trying to cheat. So if you switch on stealth mode instead, Reva Tuner stats will try to hook into the game in a sort of stealthy mode that can't be detected. This was more like for the past. It's pretty old now and I think most programs and games now know that Reva Tuner is a legitimate program. This custom Direct 3D support are for games that are using customized DirectX. For example, stuff that uses that inject FX. You're not gonna be bothered about this generally, so just leave it to off. Reva Tuner has a very nice frame rate limiter, better than any other I have seen. So if you're running a FreeSync monitor, or if you just want a limit on your frame rate, then this is as good as any that I have seen. Now, on-screen display support on. This is on the profile level, remember? Why would you want that? You could have a game that you don't want the on-screen support on, but you still want to have the frame rate limiter. So that's what this button's for. Now, the on-screen display rendering mode, this is mostly about compatibility. For example, Vector 2D, probably the most compatible one, but it doesn't work with some DirectX 10 programs when using multi-sample anti-aliasing. If we just look at the little screen, we can see what all this does. And in fact, let's just load up Tomb Raider again so we can see what it looks like in game. So here we have the old school bog standard Vector 2D font. The Raster 3D one's pretty interesting though. As we can see, it's a much nicer font, but also importantly, it has a drop down menu where you can choose whichever font you want. I've been using Unispace, but let's change to something like Impact and have a look at that one. So there's Impact, it looks like it's bold as well. Now this on-screen display coordinate space, you've got a choice of either viewport or frame buffer. If you play a game and you start noticing that the on-screen display starts appearing where you don't expect to see it, select frame buffer instead and that should fix it. Now the rest of the stuff is pretty obvious. You've got the on-screen display shadow, which you can probably see here better than you can see in the game. It makes the font stick out a lot more and you can also fill the background. As you can see here, it makes the text stand out that little bit more if that's what you need. Now you can choose whatever color you want as well. That one's pretty much self-explanatory. The on-screen display zoom simply increases the size of the font. I normally find around about just before the middle is pretty good. The final one is simply the coordinates on the screen. As you might imagine, on a 1080p screen, that'll be 1920 horizontal and 1080 vertical pixels. So if you click in this little box in here and enter 700, press return and the font disappears from the screen. But we can see now it starts around about the middle of the screen. Depending on how many statistics you're tracking, you want to set that up to look nice. That's mostly for guys like me who are using it while benchmarking. Now we can set this back to 1. Or we can use these buttons at each side to put it at one of the corners of the screen. And that is pretty much that for Reva Tuner Statistics Server. It's a lot simpler than it looks, but it's also very powerful. There's just one issue still though. We still haven't fixed this wattage problem. But to end this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. The last program you need is Hardware Info. HWinfo64, assuming you're using a 64-bit operating system, of course. So we're just gonna download the installer here. Take the latest beta version, which right now is 5.51. So extract the file to the desktop, and here we go, the application HWinfo64. Now we're only really interested in the sensors, so we can tick sensors only and run. And basically speaking, Hardware Info monitors every sensor in your system. It's far more comprehensive than Afterburner. 
It's currently bugged with the Ryzen, which is why it's showing the Ryzen voltages as 1.550 volts. This will be fixed with a Ryzen BIOS update. You can see all the core clock speeds, core and thread usage, even all of your memory timings, that kind of thing. But what we really wanted to see, of course, scrolling down near to the bottom, we can see the GPU, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070. And here's a GPU power graph, which we can see is displaying in watts. All we need to do now is right click on this, and then click on this OSD RTSS settings, on-screen display, Riva Tuna statistics server settings. It takes us directly to GPU power. So now check, show the value in the on-screen display. You can set a hotkey as well, which I am using the same as Afterburner. You can also select the position to display on-screen. So for example, I want it on line 10, well away from the rest. Go back into Tomb Raider again. And here we can see the GPU power of 150 watts or so. Hardware Info is a much better program for this. You can even change the labels on it. So instead of saying GPU power, you could call it GPU wattage or something like that. And if you're interested in say your CPU power, the one you want is the CPU package power. Again, you right click on that, OSD settings, and show the value in the on-screen display. So let's put it to line 11, column one. The GPU power of 145 watts and the CPU power of 78 watts. Now you might wonder why did I show you Afterburner, just to show you all that. The fact of the matter is, Afterburner's got some really nice stuff in it as well, so it's a tool well worth using, even if it's only for the fan control, or like I said, even taking screenshots. Alt and insert, and you'll see a little dotted circle down below the CPU package power, and that's the screenshot taken. It's that simple, and it seems to work with every game. Right, that's it for this one. Bit of a different one. I don't do an awful lot of tutorials. I know they're not really my bread and butter. You prefer the analysis stuff, but sometimes when the analysis videos are getting a little bit difficult, and with so many people asking about it, I just thought I would do this one. I will be trying to get an analysis video out by the end of this week. Hopefully an interesting one, so look out for that. Right, one last thing. A bunch of comments are just going missing. They're being stuck into my auto spam folder. Look at this, yeah? 323 likely spam. Now if I click on this tab, look, why has this been stuck in the spam folder, right? Squidisaurus? It's been stuck in the spam folder. No idea why. It's on my old delete video. So I can approve this. Now obviously posting links means there's a higher chance of it being put into the spam folder. So that one makes sense, kind of. But why was this one spammed? I mean, here's another comment, AJ Man Tech. There's nothing wrong with this comment, yet it's just been stuck into my spam folder. There's nothing I can do about this, and I do get hundreds of comments every day. So if you guys are sending me messages or, or asking me questions, I'm just not seeing them. I don't know what to do. I mean, we can see here that comments on your new videos, I am allowing all comments. I allow all comments on my channel, and yet some are simply not coming through to me. Some are not getting emailed, a bunch are being stuck in the spam folder. My guess is they will fix it eventually. But until that point, if you really desperately need me, you can hit me up on Twitter, which is something I check once or twice a day. So until the next video, I'll catch you later, guys.